in the meantime, we do want to bring into the conversation here uh, Fox News' Jennifer Griffin at the Pentagon, and she joins me now. Um, Jennifer, thanks for being with us. I know you've been very, very busy throughout the day here. What is the response from U.S. officials, not only at the Biden White House, but of course there at the Pentagon? Well, the Pentagon has been on uh, a meeting since early this morning discussing ways in which they can provide help to Israel. You heard the president today. He gave a very strong uh, statement for two minutes. He didn't take questions, but he said that the U.S. would stand by Israel, that he had spoken to Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu, and he had offered full support. He also issued a warning to other actors in the region not to get involved. That was a direct warning to both Iran as well as, as Hezbollah in Lebanon not to expand this conflict. Now, anybody that you talk to, uh, U.S. official or otherwise, knows that Iran is behind this ha Hamas attack. This Hamas attack could not have been carried out without the help of Hamas, I mean, of Iran. Iran has been providing weapons to Hamas for almost 20 years. I've covered back in 2002 a major weapons shipment of about uh, $50 million worth of weapons, uh, sorry, 50 tons, $100 million worth of weapons that were intercepted by the Israeli Navy on the high seas in the Red Sea. And so the, the weapons have been flowing in there, the money's been flowing in there to Hamas from Iran for a long time. And most Middle East watchers that you talk to suggest that the timing of this attack, uh, which was very brazen and extremely uh, carried out with extreme precision, um, it's a low-level attack in a sense, uh, but the Hamas militants quietly came across five or six points from the Gaza Strip into uh, Israel attacked. Uh, the Israeli Defense Forces were forced to uh, fight on tw in 22 different areas in southern Israel, 3,000 wow. rockets into population centers there. Uh, but anyone you talk to suggests that the timing of this was to try and derail a peace agreement between Saudi Arabia and Israel, Andrew. Oh, wow. That is so interesting. So, um, you know, experts uh, that you've spoken with are, are making that direct link tonight. I, I, so I just want to um, bring up with you, Jennifer, this tweet um, that you, you posted today. There's been a lot uh, of news and attention surrounding um, the Iranian prisoner swap, uh, some of these Iranian Americans that are now back on U.S. soil free from their Iranian captors. A and the money that was unfrozen uh, as a part of that deal, you tweet this, those who are saying that this $6 billion that was part of the American hostage release negotiated by the Biden administration likely fueled the Hamas invasion are missing some key facts. You say none of the money has been spent yet. It remains in a Qatari bank under U.S. Treasury watch. Why are some critics, especially of the Biden administration, latching on to this fact here? To your point, um, that money is not yet in the hands of, of Iran. I'm not trying to you know, have a, a false equivalency here, but yes, uh, Iran is behind some of these attacks all the time, probably this one too, but the money not directly related. Do I have that right? That's right. I think um, uh, it's it's been a number of presidential candidates, Republican presidential candidates, President, former President Trump uh, spoke about how this six billion dollars that was unfrozen from a South Korean bank and and not given to the Iranians, but put in a Qatari bank account that now is supervised by the U.S. Treasury. And you have to, uh, the Iranians can't just withdraw that money. They have to provide, it has to be third parties who are non-Iranian, who are providing humanitarian aid, uh, food or medicine to the Iranians. That's the only way that money can come out. And I spoke to U.S. Treasury officials who say that no money has been taken out of that $6 billion that's still in the Qatari account account. So just to, to confuse the American public by suggesting that that $6 billion funded this attack by Hamas is misleading at best. And it's playing politics at a time when the country should be united. And it used to be that politics ended at the shore, at the, uh, at the shore, um, at our borders, and it did not carry over when there's a crisis when the United States should actually be united in supporting Israel right now, because this is a terror attack that is, this, that is for Israel, uh, the equivalent of 9-11. Wow. So the, the facts that I was trying to put out is that anyone saying that that $6 billion was used by Hamas or used by Iran to support Hamas is misleading the American public. It's not factually accurate. What you can say, and this is accurate, and I've been reporting on this for 20 years, right. is that Iranian money, they have plenty of money from their oil sales. Uh, that money 
is diverted uh, at times to Hamas and has fueled Hamas, and Hamas would not exist without Iranian money. So yeah. that is factual, but that $6 billion is very misleading. And, and Jennifer, um, we're hearing as well from Bibi Netanyahu, he just posted on Twitter about 30 minutes ago with the latest update. He says this, this is the first line of his statement, we are embarking on a long and difficult war. The war was forced upon us by a murderous attack by Hamas. We're not even 24 hours uh, since this all uh, unfolded. Uh, and so is the world really gearing up now for what is shaping up to be the largest uh, conflict in Israel, I would argue, since 1973, since the Yom Kippur War? Well, look at the anniversary. It's, it, it was one day after the 50th anniversary of the Yom Kippur War, 1973, when Egypt and Syria uh, conducted a surprise attack while, while Israelis were, uh, were, were sleeping and were, were celebrating the holiest day of the year, Yom Kippur. That surprise attack, there are rem there's a reason that this date, uh, this uh, Sabbath day was chosen, this holiday in yeah. Israel was chosen, and the symbolism is not lost on those who have studied the Middle East for years. Uh, somebody put it to me this evening that the number of Israelis killed in this first 24 hours, 300 in that first wave of attacks, if you look at the size of the Israeli population, 7 million people, uh, that is the equivalent of, for the U.S. losing 50,000 Americans in one attack. So this is going to be a very, very serious response by Israel. Some have described it to me as a potentially biblical response. Uh, Israel will go into the Gaza Strip, and it is going to be street by street. They're going to be rounding uh, people up and searching for the militants. But what they have, the problem that they have right now is that there are dozens of women and children, as well as soldiers, Israeli soldiers who have been taken hostage and dragged back into the Gaza Strip. And so it's going to be very difficult because they're being held as human shields tonight. Wow. And you're right. I mean, the language we're hearing from both sides, you know, it almost sounds biblical as well. And you're hearing uh, from some here stateside uh, calling for the complete and utter destruction of Hamas. Uh, I mean, why do you think Hamas carried this out? Why do you think they've been so emboldened uh, recently? Because there have been so many incursions, especially there in the West Bank and Gaza, rooting out some of these militant groups um, like Islamic Jihad, like Hamas, um, but nothing to this scale. Why now? Look, the situation with the Israelis and the Palestinians has been festering for more than 30 years. And, and the, the lack of a, a peace process, if you will, the lack of a two-state solution for the Palestinians has led to a great deal of anger. The Israelis have basically blockaded Gaza and the Gaza Strip, but the Gazans themselves, with Hamas militants leading the way, have burrowed under tunnels into Egypt and they have created ways to get weapons into the Gaza Strip. And basically, since 2005, when the Israeli military pulled all Jewish settlers out of the Gaza Strip, I was there as a young reporter at the time and covered it. Ever since then, Gaza has become a very militant, militarized uh, piece of land that the Israelis don't control. They uh, have basically encircled them with uh, fences and, and border control, but, but there were no Israelis inside of Gaza, and that is how they were able to carry out this sneak attack, if you will. Okay. Uh, on the West Bank, there have been clashes uh, between the Israeli military going in, incursions, taking out not just Hamas militants, but also uh, Palestinian Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigades, Islamic Jihad, and others. Um, there has been a, a, a rising tension uh, in the West Bank uh, for some time. And so, but I think if you look at what is happening in the region, this is uh, really as much about that peace deal that we've been hearing about, right. that Brett Baer had the interview with sure. uh, Mohammed bin Salman, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, and with Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister of Israel. It looked like they were getting closer to a peace deal. And the Palestinians, they felt that perhaps they might get left out in the process, and Iran certainly didn't want any deal between their arch enemy, Saudi Arabia, and Israel. And remember, the Iranians have been saying for some time, that going back to Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, right. when he was the president of Iran, that they would wipe Israel off the map. Well, they attempted their first swipe today uh, with using their proxy fighters, Hamas, 
uh, but now Israel is going to uh, use its very, very uh, forceful military, and I'm afraid to, I fear for what is going to happen in the Gaza Strip, but it, unfortunately, uh, Hamas brought this on their own heads and, and unfortunately onto the people of Gaza. Yeah, and, and the supreme leader there in Iran, the Ayatollah, uh, relishing this uh, on his own social media today. Jennifer Griffin there, live for us at the Pentagon. We appreciate your reporting and your time. Talk soon.